Hi guys, Debbie here. Um, I've had a lot of people asking about how to make photo collage text, um, and particularly for um, Mother's Day gifts. Uh, I think mugs. I think a lot of people are putting them on mugs. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video on how I do that with Photoshop. Um, this is just an example. Um, I'm going to use some landscape photos just so I don't have, um, you know, a bunch of family photos I'm putting onto a YouTube video, but um, really it's all the same process. So uh, first you need to open up a new document and I'm just going to do 10 inch uh, box. Make sure you have 300 pixels per inch, so you've got a high resolution um, graphic that you're working with. Um, RGB color is typically what you need for sublimation, but whatever your project needs. Um, and then I'm just going to keep the background white here. So we're starting with a new one. Uh, we're going to grab our text and write out the word that you want. I'm going to do the word glacier. Um, I like to use impact font, which since I just use this, it's pulling in automatically, but you could use any font you want, but impact is a really big, thick, um, simple font, so it's not too busy, because once you fill it with a bunch of photos, um, it, it could be hard to read. And I'm just using the word glacier just for this example. Um, that's, that's where all these photos that that I was pulling in were from a trip to Glacier we took last summer and I'm kind of a photography junkie so it's um, <laughs> I've got a lot of photos to choose from here so and of course I lost my folder uh, I'm gonna go personal photos these photos edited okay so you want you get your word on there you just open up another folder and grab whatever pictures you want and you drag and drop them in. So when you drop it in, it's going to automatically put it in the center. Uh, you want to check this box up here so it actually finishes dropping it. And then you can go and grab another photo. And I'm just going to grab a few here. Hit the checkbox again. Um, really, you can make this as as complex or as simple as you would like. It is up to you. Let's just grab one more. Okay, hit the little checkbox again. So once you get the pictures dropped in, you can always add more later, but once you get the pictures dropped in, um, I like to come over to my layers and you grab your text and bring it all the way up to the top makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. Then you could grab uh, the individual photos and resize them and move them around until you get kind of the desired effect that you want. And by having the word on top of everything, it's a little easier to see what you're doing. So I'm going to hit the checkbox. I grab the next photo. Let's do that. this one just over these letters. Like that. Grab this. Now I'm going to, just for the sake of showing you for the picture, I want to make this pink flower right here on this A. Um, if you have some photos that are going to conflict with each other, uh, you can you can crop those out. And there's a couple ways you could do it. Um, you could just grab a box and go like right around the A here. And as long as you're on the layer with that flower, if you right click and you hit layer via copy, it'll just bring what's in that box into a new layer. So you hide the old layer that's too big, and it'll make it smaller. Um, you can also, we'll go back to that layer so I can show you again. Um, you can take your eraser tool, and um, if you click on it, right now it's linked because I dropped it in. But you can rasterize the smart object so it basically makes it um, uh, inside the document. It's not linking to an external one. Um, and then you can erase it however you need to to allow for room for the other photos around it. Or um, you could even use how I did that box on that first example there. Um, you can use the lasso tool and cut things out specifically. Right click, layer via copy, 
then you have that one little spot you can move around. Um, but we're just going to stick with get rid of all these things that I'm doing here. We're going to stick with the one that I cut out here. And then we're going to resize this last one. And this isn't the final here. You can move them around after the fact, but but just for the sake of the video here, I'm just going to drop them all in, kind of get them generally how I want them. And you come back over to your layers. You grab your text, bring it back down to the bottom because it has to be underneath everything. Then you could take your four images. I'm just going to click the top one, hold down shift on my keyboard, hit the bottom one so all four images or layers are selected. Right click and hit create clipping mask. That's that's the important part here of what we're doing. So the clipping masks will make it so only the stuff with the main base shape um, will it'll wrap around those. But if you look at it once you turn on the clipping mask and you say no 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 I want to have this flower. Okay, see so you now the layers are still in effect here. So I'm going to move the flower up to the top so I can move it around better. Let's say I would rather have that on the G. So I'm going to move it over to the G, and then that means we can come over here and grab these trees and move them over here, or whatever. I mean, you could do you could do half and half if you wanted to. Let's move these trees to the top layer. We can come over here, and we could do half the word with trees and and half of it with the mountains or whatever. You can move them around however you see fit. Um, but then that's it. Oh, here, look at my layers got messed up again. I want to put this back down at the bottom. Um, if you do start moving things around and you copy some things, like let's say, um, let's, so I was, I was cutting something out earlier and it was, it did it so I could show you what it does. Over here, um, all of these ones that are masked, they have a little arrow showing that it's all masking down to the word glacier. But if you go in here and you hit copy, sometimes it doesn't have a little arrow. It's not masking anymore. So if I move this over, see it's not wrapping around that G, but let's say I want it to wrap around that G. You come back over here and you just hit create clipping mask again. Notice it cut off. You need to have all of the ones that you want wrapping around the word to have this little arrow there. So if the clipping mask goes away, you need to come back and redo them so that they're actually working. Now I don't I don't want that there. But yeah. So the only other thing that I like to do, hold on, this is bugging me. I'm on the A there. Um, sometimes if you're doing a lot of photos, it can get um, kind of busy and hard to, to read the words. So adding a stroke or an outline to the letter can sometimes help. So we're going to go over here to the text and I'm going to go over here to my styles panels or the little effects panel. If you don't have it docked somewhere, the styles, if you come up to window and you click on styles, it'll pop it up for you. But I just keep mine docked up here and I already have a style saved, but I'm going to show you if you didn't, you can click on any of their presets here. Well, that's just plain goofy, but if you click on any of them, then you can open it up and edit it. So down here, once you click on a style, it shows you all the different styles. So on the, the effects is the top here. If you double click on that, it's going to open up the layer style panel. And then you can go in here and delete all these ones you don't want. So it gets back to the bare bones. But there's a little drop down menu here. You can choose stroke. And by default, it drops in one pixel of black. But you could just make it a little bit bigger and then hit OK. And you've got a nice outline, which just makes it a little easier to read. You could change the color. You can make it thicker or whatever. But the default, just a little bit thicker, works great. Then you can export it. Um, I like to go in and delete the background. And then I just go File, Save As, choose where I want it choose it as a ping file so it preserves that transparent background and just hit save and make sure you choose large file size so it doesn't compress it at all it's only the best quality it can and hit okay and you're done then you could bring it into whatever software you're going to print it with or 
if you wanted to add more text, you know, whatever. But you could do the collage however your creativity guides you. <laughs> um, hopefully that helps. If I miss anything, just let me know. Um, but have fun making photo collage words. <laughs> <laughs>